Good morning, Good morning everyone. everyone. Thank, Thank you for the opportunity to present. present. On behalf of my co-authors, Dr. Dr. Peter Callas, a statistician, and Dr. Dr. Abu Jaish, senior author, I'll be presenting histopathological evaluation of specimen following cholecystectomy. Are we accepting resectin discard? I have no relevant disclosures. I'm sure, I'm sure the vast, the vast majority, majority of this audience is well familiar with cholecystectomy. It's, it's performed over half a million times yearly in the United States. States. Routine, Routine practice at our institution is to send all gallbladder specimens to surgical pathology postoperatively for analysis. The primary reason that we perform this is to detect incidental gallbladder carcinoma. The detection of incidental gallbladder carcinoma can profoundly change clinical management as it can necessitate radical reoperation with resection of the gallbladder fossa and lymphadenectomy. In our changing healthcare environment, it has become increasingly important to evaluate the cost and value of the interventions to the patient. Few data exist at this point regarding the surgical value of this intervention. However, it is well assumed that sending these specimens to surgical pathology has great benefit. The prognosis and outlook of gallbladder carcinoma is very dismal with a low five-year survival. However, the subpopulation that is detected incidentally after cholecystectomy has relatively favorable prognosis because it's caught early. Here we can play pathologist for a moment and evaluate both gross and histological images of the gallbladder as it is sent after surgery. On the left, we see common pathology such as cholelithiasis and cholesterolosis of the gallbladder. On the right, we see an advanced gallbladder adenocarcinoma. Our study designed to answer this clinical question was to perform a retrospective analysis of all gallbladder specimens sent to surgical pathology at our institution over a five-year period. Patients were excluded if there was any suspicion for malignancy preoperatively or if they had a preoperative diagnosis of gallbladder polyp. The standard protocol at our institution with the surgical pathology department is to grossly analyze the specimen and then to take three histological specimens at the fundus, mid-body, and infundibulum as seen in this diagram. If any dysplasia or carcinoma is noted on these sections, the entire specimen would then be sectioned and, about and analyzed completely. This busy table shows the baseline characteristics of the population. We subdivided the entire population into two groups in a case-controlled fashion those who had benign findings on their surgical pathology, and those who had incidental gallbladder carcinoma. The highlights of this table are that the, um, the main differences between these groups in terms of their preoperative characteristics were that the incidental gallbladder carcinoma group tended to be more commonly performed open and with longer operative time implying greater, greater operative, operative difficulty with these cases. They also trended towards more commonly emergent and towards older age, though these findings were not statistically significant. All the pathology reports were read and the, the pertinent findings were analyzed and quantified. Here we see a table showing the most common of these findings and the most pertinent. 
At the top, circled in red, is gallbladder adenocarcinoma, which we found in 0.25% of patients. This puts it at the lower end of the spectrum in terms of what has previously been reported in the literature, which can vary tenfold from 0.25% to 2.5%. This table shows the characteristics of the five patients that were found to have incidental gallbladder carcinoma. They varied in stage, grade, and histopathological characteristics. The least advanced was a T2N0, and the most advanced was a T3N1M1. Four of the five patients received a subsequent radical resection. One patient, an 88-year-old male, opted for non-operative palliative management. You can see at the far right is their survival. And highlighted in yellow are the two that have thus far achieved long-term or long-term um, disease-free survival with 30 plus months of ongoing survival, and as of right now, no evidence of any recurrent carcinoma. These two patients are essentially the two lives that were saved with the screening of the 2,000 gallbladders. Finally, we sought to perform a cost-benefit analysis of, of the, the pathological, pathological screening, screening of all gallbladders. We, we did, did this by performing a life year's gain per healthcare dollar spent approach. As, As you can see, here are some of the numbers that um, we used to make this calculation. And our final calculation was $138,000 per life year gain. Now there are several caveats to this number one of them is that we have two patients with ongoing disease-free survival. So the, the longer that we can uh, expect them to live, the lower this value will go. We also use charges billed for our cost number and not charges received, which is typically significantly lower than what is billed. Finally, we did not use a quality adjustment for this number due to the low end value of the adenocarcinoma group. As far as what is a fair number in terms of what's a good cutoff for the cost of a life year, it's controversial, obviously, in the literature. Anytime you're trying to monetize the value of a year of someone's life, there will be a lot of dissent. One well-established standard within the medical community is the cost of hemodialysis over a year, which is calculated at 130,000 per life year, or roughly equivalent to this number. In conclusion, the incidence of incidental gallbladder carcinoma in our population is very low. Despite this, the routine screening of all gallbladder specimens for incidental gallbladder carcinoma appears to be justified based on a cost-benefit life years analysis. However, a selective screening approach based on preoperative risk factors, intraoperative findings, and on-table examination of specimen may be sufficiently sensitive and cost-effective. Limitations of the study, some of which I've already alluded to. The patient population and demographics. Gallbladder carcinoma is found in higher numbers in Native American and Asian populations, which are underrepresented in our referral area. We had a low end value for the cancer cohort. There is lack of long-term follow-up to 
find the cumulative life years that are truly gained. Finally, there was uh, no T1 cancers found within this cohort, which could raise questions as to whether or not three slices evaluated histologically is adequately sensitive to detect all incidental gallbladder carcinoma. Thank, Thank you very, very much. much.